Hey everybody, what is going on? How you guys doing out there? How you doing? How you doing? How you doing? Sorry, we're a couple of minutes late. We're just trying to make sure that everything else is working. And uh, yeah, this is not super happy for me because yeah, there we go. Yeah, trying to do everything at 1080 because that's what our source is and that's where we are coming out and look at all that stuff how you guys doing out there i'm solar gray the cinematic sorcerer and welcome to the dark side of the room where we take a look at what it's like being a gamer of color or lgbt or just someone who is normally not within the mainstream so big shout out to my blurs out there big shout out to my lbgt nerds out there big shout out to my people in rural area who gotta walk or hitchhike miles and miles in order to get to your local gaming store to pick up any type of stuff outside of setting a roll of toilet paper on fire and kicking it around the backyard or the back of property what is going on uh today we are talking about a lot of different things as i said um on the announcement today we are going to be talking about some of the complications that come from being a new player and some of the things that new players do to get past discomfort. But first we have to talk about what those uncomfortable things are. But before we do any of that stuff, I gotta do the like, subscribe, notification bell, share with your friends, do all that stuff. Or if you guys want to participate in this, join us over in the chat with all of that fun stuff. And be sure to send us an email or something at backinthedeck at gmail.com. That's B-A-C-K-I-N-T-H-E-D-E-C-K at gmail.com. You can also hit us up on the social medias, be it the Twitter, or the Instagram, just look for back in the deck that's instagram.com slash back in the deck or twitter.com slash back in the deck if you are part of that wretched hive of scum and villainy known as facebook then all you gotta do is look for the group deckers on the book and that is where you guys can sign up be deckers talk to us individually and talk to each other build the community share all that other stuff now if you guys really like what we're doing and want to help us out in a very very personal matter well there's a couple of things you can do thing one <clears throat> that you can do is simple head on over to soundcloud.com slash bid underscore p because we have the audio from all of our shows and i'm just uh though we've been down for a couple of days i will tell you i have been uploading stuff like crazy <laughs> just so that you guys can listen to a lot of the stuff that we do. And of course, you guys can download it and keep it forever at your own pace. You know, keep it forever, share it with your friends, do all that stuff. We don't really care. Okay, just, you know, listen to us, talk to us, you know, uh, let us know the stuff that you like and don't like. And if you really want to help us out in a very, very personal manner in order for us to keep the lights on and all that stuff, just head on over to patreon.com slash BID underscore P and become a decker and the way that you become a decker is real simple all you got to do is go to patreon.com slash bid underscore p and then go down to this little area and go follow and become a decker there and for as little as a dollar a month you can get the cop the title of decker talk with us individually have a little influence on what we do or you can go up for your playing card ratings, such as our queen, Shannon Boomlay, our king, Paul Mansfield, and our eights in the hole, Jennifer Crow. And with that, you guys get bunches of perks. I mean, we, we give away dice rollers and miniatures. And, you know, honestly, at the $20 tier, you can Skype with me personally, and I will teach you how to play a game of your choice, which means even if I don't have it, I will go out, I will find it, I will buy it, I will learn it, and then I will teach it to you because that is what we do here. We're all about growing the community so with that let's get the show started today's show is really about discomfort in being a new person at a gaming table okay um what does that mean well um everybody knows johnny come lately the new kid in town 
Now, being that person comes with a whole lot of different complications. Now, a lot of people are like, well, I don't, I haven't been new for a long time. I've had my own uh, gaming community for decades and I have my group of friends and all that stuff. And I get that. I definitely get that. And this is not for you to do yourself, but stick around and listen, okay? Um, at every point in anybody's set of skills, we've all been new. We've all been the new guy. Be it the new guy on a job, be it new guy at school, be it new guy at the new rec center. Um, and honestly, one of the things about being new is learning the new cultures, okay? Um, that's big. That's really, really big. Learning the new cultures. You might have been, say, playing Dungeons and Dragons since second edition, but what house rules are there going to be with your new group? Um, if you're brand new to the table, like if you've never played um, the game that's being played, be it Risk or Axis and Allies or Risk at Godstorm or something, new can be uncomfortable. Being new can be uncomfortable. And there are a lot of ways that this discomfort manifests. Now, currently, we live in a time where um, we have the internet and everybody can Google anything, okay? Everybody can Google anything. But with that seems to be this new idea of get good before showing up. So you have to do a hundred hours of homework before talking to anyone else and this is um this is by definition elitism now i get that people want to feel exclusive but the problem with exclusivity is that some folks got to be excluded and there's nothing inherently wrong about that but in practice and in practice, a lot of that exclusivity or that exclusion manifests itself in, well, I talked with my mom once and she said something that I truly do not believe. And I love my mama. I love my mama. And if you don't, hey, we got problems. All right. But she once said that trust takes forever to build and a moment to destroy now truth be told i don't believe that that's not my paradigm that's that goes against my first principle because um in the life that i live trust is difficult to build but once it's built it's pretty strong and the experiences that i've had state that if trust is easily torn down it really wasn't there what really exists is a facade of trust and someone waiting for a reason to push it over. And there, that's, that's a huge difference in thought. Um, so we have this idea that anyone new needs to be on our level, right? There's this huge thing that people have, especially in the gaming world, be it video games or tabletop games, where publicly speaking, the loudest voices out there on the internet are really big about get good. Get good, noob, get good. Um, there was a group that I was a part of that I left that, um, that was acting like this in regards to a game that literally came out in November, today being February 25th. I just want you to think about that. You know, if they're saying before Christmas, get good at the game, it's like the game hasn't even been out for a month. But people want to feel like they're special. They want to feel like they're exclusive and they want to feel like experts. Okay. Um, and the loudest voices tend to be the most mean. Now, the consequences that these things have is that when the new players... When the new players come out um, and they're doing their research, the number one voices they see are the meanest voices. And this can create a huge, huge, huge barrier 
to their desire for entry or their comfort once they come in. I mean, I've never, I have never appreciated nor agreed with the idea that a person is supposed to be an expert on their first day. Nor do I believe in hazing, really. I mean, you know, it's one thing to say, look, you don't quite know what you're talking about, but here are the resources to find out what you're talking about or the truth of what you're talking about and ask me any questions if there's more you want to know. I think that's cool. But making fun of people who don't already have your wealth of knowledge, that's not what we're here for. That's just a means of gatekeeping, protection of ego, and my least favorite idea when it comes to that is the formerly bullied fighting for their turn to be a bully. And I'm not against, I, I'm not for that. I am avidly against that. Um, as you guys know, a couple of weeks ago, um, we were in Las Vegas and I'm working on the audio for the one hour one shot that I did for these guys. And no one at the table knew what they were doing except me because no one at the table had ever played a tabletop role-playing game. None of them, none of them ever did. Some of them wanted to, but didn't have access to the materials. That's why we're here. Um, some of them thought about it, but never really got around to it. And a couple of them had seen it done, but only in video game form with things like Diablo and Fallout and Red Dead Redemption and things like that. So, um, when these guys um, sat down at my table, I walked them through character creation. And it was a tough thing because let's face it, um, excuse me, the knowledge barrier to entry for a tabletop role-playing game is pretty high. Um, in order to get past this with a lot of people from my culture, I've experimented with a lot of things over the years. One of the things I've tried experimenting with was something that a lot of the books and um, the the um, the league model tries, which is here are some pre-generated characters, hand them to new players. Um, this raised an eyebrow, and we might do a show on this later on. I'll put up a poll on Twitter, and you guys tell me if you want to hear it of um, the cultural disassociation because handing someone a pre-generated character when they don't have much context for what the powers are or what the skills are, that's really not a cool thing to do because it falls into this idea of what am I looking at? Now, we're in the 21st century and the number one thing that people don't like is to look stupid. They really hate feeling stupid, but as long as they don't look stupid, um, they'll kind of grit their teeth, put their head down, and power through it, whether or not they're really interested. Now, you guys see this a lot at your gaming tables when it comes to having to convince someone to play, be it an older sibling, a significant other, um, a different kind of family member, a new friend, that kind of thing. And... Since we live in an internet society where the whole thing is, unless you're an expert, shut up. This raises a few psychological issues, okay? And that's what we're going to be talking about today. Today, um, I'm going to talk about some of the ways that navigating this discomfort silently manifests and why these, these methods tend to be ineffective, okay? Um, we're gonna get to the first one. Woo, yeah, we're totally get to the first one, okay? First one would be lack of punctuality. That is a real thing. That is a real thing. It's a real thing that happens. And where, oh, where, where did my mouse go? Ah, there we go. Yeah, uh, lack of punctuality. It's, it's a real thing. Um, one of the things I've seen over the past 30 something years of my gaming is um, is the person that really isn't into it will drag their feet, they will lag, and they will either show up late to game while everyone else is waiting for them, or once they're at game, 
they'll drag their feet in playing. They'll do whatever it takes to keep the game from starting, okay? This could be ordering food. Like, um, here's a great big sandwich of impunctuality. Um, showing up to the game 30 minutes late and then talking about things that are going on outside of the game, um, followed by convincing everyone in the room to order food, followed by um, deliberating like the Supreme Court on what food to order, and then taking 20 or 30 minutes to actually place the order for the food after things have been, um, after things have been decided on where people want to order food from then it comes to taking the orders and all these things that stack up to running out the clock so that there's no time for game okay um sorry to tell you guys but most of your gms know this most of your gms know this they see this and in all honesty the motivations for doing this are understandable now I want to I want to um point out something real quick. We already understand. We hear it back in the deck, understand why you do what you do. Okay? We understand why. However, we don't condone. So what we're going to do is post better ways of navigating that discomfort, okay? Um we know why, but we're making it clear that that's not okay. Okay, not judging, not attacking, just letting you know that we see this thing, these are the effects of those actions, and these are some of the things that you can do in the meantime, okay? Um, so, when it comes to that lack of punctuality, it's an understandable thing. Most of the time, the lack of punctuality, the dragging the feet, the doing all this stuff to run out the clock, really comes from a motivation of really not being into it, not really being willing to get into it, and to not seem like the jerk or seeming uninterested. The fact of the matter is there are fears behind all of these actions. There are fears of looking stupid. There are fears of seeming um, ignorant. There's a fear of I, I suppose you can say there's a fear of outward perception. That's understandable, okay? Um, but here are some better ways to deal with that and opposed to being late. Take some time between session zero, where everyone's talking, um, to sit down with the GM one-on-one -on -one in private where no one else in the game um, knows about this conversation. Now this is it seems dramatic but just just hold on with me we live in an age of facebook twitter texting calling showing up in person me we um whatsapp email google chat zoom okay there are 10 ways to communicate with someone one on one and all that was on the top off the top of my head so if a person is afraid of how they're going to look to the rest of the group, um, it's very easy to take time with the GM and say, okay, let's talk one-on-one. -on -one. Let's have this in consequence. And would you be willing to sit down with me and walk me through this? Because I want to seem like I know what I'm doing. Um, and um, I, I want to let you guys know a major thing. There is no shame in a new player not understanding the player's handbook. And it doesn't matter what player's handbook we're talking about, be it anything from Dungeons and Dragons or Midnight or Call of Cthulhu and all those things. These things are textbooks that require study. And the GM is the one that's already studied it. If you're new to the game, um, if you're trying to study these books and you just don't get it, okay, you just don't get what you're reading or it's not sinking in or your eyes glaze over, that is perfectly understandable. And here's the good news. All of us have gone through it. 
okay? Um, some of the solutions that I use, because I go through it every single time I get a new miniatures game, I'm like, oh God, I hate the format of these. Why are they using these pros? You know what? I'm gonna go to YouTube and see if I can find an instructional video. You know, there are study tools out there and most GMs actually know them. All right. Now, I know quite a few GMs that aren't really down with new players. Or if they are down with new players, they run the new player through the, I buckled down and I learned this. You need to, too, if you're going to play with me. And you know what? More power to them. But they're not the only game in town. Okay. I, I'm, I'm happy to let you guys know they're not the only ones in town. With us, with Discord, with Skype, there's lots of different ways to go through these things. Um, so yeah, so there's no reason to show up late and try and run the clock out. And when you do these things, you're literally wasting the time of everybody else that's there. And imagine if you were going to a party that couldn't start until somebody else showed up. So all you had to do was wait. Your day would be pretty screwed up and think about how mad you'd be on that. Okay, let's move on. Um, the next way that people disengage to try and sink into the background is silence. Silence is a big one. Oh my God, it's a big one. And that is, um, that is something that I first saw in junior high school in regards to not having done our homework, okay? Um, staying silent, not making a fuss, fading into the back, getting small, getting small. Nope, nope, nope. That's a whole thing. You know, not asking questions and not understanding what's going on. So just staying silent in what seems to be the hopes that no one will, that people will forget that you're there. Okay. I see this a lot and I definitely see this a lot with my female players. My new female players are like, I don't want to say anything because I don't want to be made fun of. So I'm just going to, yeah, where outside a game, they're boisterous. They got flavor or they got freaking spunk. But when it comes to the playing of the game, they're like, oh, well, <laughs> out of fear of, again, you know, all those same fears. Okay. Um, one of the ways through this is very simple. It, it's what I do when I talk to a lot of people. Now, I come from a background of being surrounded by people who became jerks because they were surrounded by jerks, i.e. the phrase, you don't know what you're talking about was always, 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 always used as a means to um, invalidate a person. Like, you don't even know what you're talking about. Shut up, you know? And I get that. That's definitely where that fear comes in. But just because you're not an expert on the rules to say Dungeons and Dragons doesn't mean you ain't watched 140 episodes of Star Trek and get the science fiction tropes. Doesn't mean you haven't seen Lord of the Rings and you have an observation of something that just happened in game and you might think, hey, that's just like Lord of the Rings. And you want to ask that question. You know, um, a lot of people do the idiocracy thing, which is <laughs> he doesn't even know this. <laughs> what are you, an idiot? Those people are not worth your time. OK, so if you establish the boundary and say, look, I don't know what you do, but I promise you there's a lot of stuff that I know that you don't and I wouldn't treat you like this. If they can't take that as adults, you're sitting at the wrong table, okay? There is no need to chase these people, nor is there a need to disappear once you're there. So speak up, ask questions. If you don't get the joke, be cool and be like, I don't get it. Was that a private joke or anything like that? Because I don't know what you're talking about, all right? Um, so yeah, it's, it's, don't be afraid to speak up because unasked questions rarely get answered. And when they do, they get answered by luck. Don't roll the dice in what could be something that you can enjoy for the rest of your life. You get, you get what I'm saying on that? Now, when it comes to my people, when it comes to my people, um, it is unfailing every single time 
I go to my old neighborhood or I speak to people from my neck of the woods. When they are uncomfortable with stuff that comes up, like I was teaching one friend of mine how to play Marvel Crisis Protocol and there are size ratings, you know, like what size is this person? The size is a medium size. Uh, Captain America is a size two, Black Widow's a size two, Ultron's a size four. And the first thing that came out of that came out of his mouth because he's rather insecure sometimes is that don't make no sense. Captain America is bigger than Black Widow and blah 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 blah. And that argument came from not understanding the context or the metric by which things were being measured. And this falls into the category of the arguing of realism. Okay, that don't make no sense. That ain't real. In real life, this would have been this. In real life, that would have been that. In real life, this is this would have been that. Um, one of my heroes is a black writer by the name of Kevin Grievous. And someone on Twitter once tried to um now he is the writer of the Blue Marvel from Marvel Comics. He wrote the Underworld um, franchise. He wrote I Frankenstein, both the comic book and the movie. And um, someone was like, well, that doesn't make sense. How can they blah, 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 blah. And his reply is, oh, yeah, I totally am going to make sense in my movie that's starring um, fictional vampires against fictional werewolves, you know. Um, what a lot of, and you see this all over the internet. I first came across it when I was fighting in what's called the SCA or the Society of Creative Anachronisms or sword carrying a-holes. And all the time, all the time, all the time, all the time is, um, all these people saying, if this had been a real sword, if this had been a real sword, um, if it had been a real sword, if this, if this thing happened, if this, and it's like, look, the game behind the game is these rules are here for gameplay reasons or flavor reasons so if that don't make no sense um think about it a little deeper but most people don't do that excuse me because it doesn't make sense most people that are unversed or um you know most people that are in this insecure state of mind Argue the things that don't make sense, especially while the rules are being explained, because they are looking to not feel incompetent. It's it's literally a little grasp of power because they're getting in over their heads or they're getting confused. And instead of saying that, they try and push their own expertise. Okay? It's one of those, I don't know. Like, I'm not expert at what you're talking about. So we're going to change the subject to something that I know so that I don't feel small. Okay. Um, <clears throat> this is a huge thing. This happens at every gaming table. If you don't believe me and you have access, head to your local gaming store and just listen to a game being played. And you can tell the new player that doesn't want to be there. They'll be like, that doesn't make sense. How come I can't? Now, this arguing for realism is something that also comes up when a person's trying to win, but that's a different episode. But we've only got a certain amount of time, so let's move on to the next um, subject on this one. And this is one of the biggest things um, that people do right now, okay? And what a lot of people do right now in this day and age is instead of... Um, Instead of um, engaging and trying to learn, the moment they feel out of place and uncomfortable comes the, ooh, oh, sorry, uh, wrong subject. Yeah, yeah get my equipment in order. Come, the cell phone telephones. They pull out their phone and that is where, where they are. Um, this is so, common especially with the new condition of cell phone addiction that we have in the 21st century now i don't want to come off like an old man going these kids today are always on their phones no, no 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 i'm not talking about that okay what i'm talking about is um not a distraction method but an avoidance method okay when let's say for the sake of argument 
that you're a gamer and you have a boyfriend that doesn't get why you go to this dude's house and sit in a room with four other guys for seven or eight hours at a time. So you bring them to the game and you invite them, um, you know, you invite them to play the game and they kind of fight you on creating a character and all that other stuff. And then they see that the game is descriptive and it takes a lot of things. So instead of engaging to really find out what's going on, they just pull out their cell phone and they start checking their social media. That's what they do. And when it comes around to them, when it's their turn, then comes all of the questions. Well, what just happened? Can I do this? What about this? What about this? You know, and all of these questions that end up getting asked if they weren't on their cell phone, telephone and paying attention to game. <clears throat> and again, these are subtle tactics to take over the situation and make it something that they are comfortable with. Now, boy, am I going to get so much hate mail on these videos because people are going to feel attacked and all that jazz. And again, I'm going to say... Um, I am not accusing anyone of doing, you know, this show isn't about accusing people of doing it out of malice. Okay. I don't, I'm not saying you guys are doing it in order to be jerks. No, no, no. What I'm saying is these are some of the tools, especially the cell phone that a lot of people use, um, when, they want to disengage or they're uncomfortable or there's a lot of there's a lot of stuff that they don't understand outright you know um after we get through the next point i'll i'll explain some other things because i understand where a lot of this stuff is coming okay um now the biggest thing and this is the thing that happens a lot especially with my people and with my people i mean the urban people that also means la uh latinx um, black, um, you know, and everyone in between that grows up in those kinds of school, school systems. Y'all feel me, Chicago. Y'all feel me, Baltimore. Y'all definitely feel me, L-A-U-S-D. Yes, it spells lost. Um, and that is humor. Humor in and of itself is not a problem. But in theater... There is a body motion that comes out when people have flubbed their line or they've screwed up a joke. And that body motion tells the audience everything. And what's that body motion? This. Okay? As soon as the as soon as you're doing the jackhammer, jackhammer a chicken wing. Okay? That's the waka waka waka. Hub hubba hubba. Joke, joke, joke. Please don't pay attention to the fact that I'm I'm kind of incompetent at this and I'm uncomfortable. Waka waka waka. Okay. Um, <clears throat> this is a big one. You see it all the time, all the time. Um, especially when it comes to a misunderstanding of the game setting, um, the universe that it's in, the world that it's set in. When a person doesn't have answers to questions that seem obvious. One of the things a lot of people do is they try and joke around it. They try and be the funny character. Okay. Um, we all see this now. Um, as a lot of people who know me personally know, I do not like most of the writing that comes out of Joss Whedon. I've come to like him as a director. Okay. Um, the way that he focuses cameras and the shots that he decides to go on, um, works a lot. But what I don't like is something called bathos, as in bath, oh, bathos. I'm not a big fan. Um, it is the literary device that uses humor to diffuse tension in a situation or a story arc. Okay. Now, um... Having grown up with a bunch of friends that love Joss Whedon's work, I am 
I personally am a big fan of drama, okay? Now, I love comedy, do not get me wrong. I did what I could back in the late 90s and early 2000s to be a stand-up comic, it's no big deal. But what I enjoy is a balanced story, okay? I enjoy a balanced story that lives up to the tone that it sets in the premise. What does that mean? It's simple. When I go see a horror movie, I want to get scared. You know, um, if I end up laughing, I end up laughing because I'm a sick puppy. But what I don't want is for the horror director to try to make me laugh. Okay, if I go and see a drama, I don't want to see too many jokes. I'd like to sit with the dramatic impact. Okay, I mean, you can see this with... um. There is a difference between The Godfather and Johnny Dangerously. They're both mob movies, but one is a comedy. And that's one of the things that I'm, I'm big on, okay? If I go to see a comedy, tell some jokes. If I go to see a drama, you can tell some jokes, all right? Um, but a lot of players that don't know what they're doing or don't understand much about the setting or any of that stuff, they'll throw jokes. They'll throw jokes, they'll use edgy humor, or they'll do whatever it takes to make everyone else at the table laugh. And I'm not saying that this is a bad thing, but much like bathos, you have to understand where to place it, okay? Um, think about this. Um, I've been watching a comedic take on Final Fantasy VII. But there is a character named Eris, for those of you guys who haven't played. And she is the young, cute little sister archetype who's bright eyed and hopeful. And she's the, oh golly, we can do this in the team. Spoilers, since it came out in 99, 98. Yeah, it's been, it, it, it's, it's been a while since that game came out. Spoilers, she dies. And they have an entire cutscene of her funeral. So when you're watching that humble funeral thing or that moment, um, um, or if you guys haven't seen Bambi, you know, Bambi, the Disney movie from the 1940s, when Bambi's mom gets shot by the hunter, when Bambi is a child, the last thing you want to hear is, wah, 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 you know, or freaking as Patton Oswalt said, watching footage of the 9-11 towers, falling from 9-11-2001, last thing you want to hear is eighth floor, women's lingerie, seventh floor, men's hats. You know that that's, and that's what bathos is. It takes away <laughs> any, um, you know, um, it, it takes away the punch of those moments. Now, when a person is being funny or um, when the humor that comes out is natural, that's fine. But Anyone who has watched television for more than three years knows when someone is trying to tell a joke and when someone is just funny, okay? Um, now, when it comes to doing these things, you know, lack of punctuality, humor, cell phones, all these ways to distract, you might ask, okay, Solar, you know all this other stuff, you're talking about these things, but what should they do instead? Well, that's simple, okay? These things are really simple. Um, one, uh, let's go through this a uh, little bit at a time, okay? Lack of punctuality because you're trying to stall to stop the game. It's really simple, okay? Um, show up on white people business times. If you're not early, you're late. Don't be late. Show up early ask questions that's literally what the gm is there for and if the gm doesn't have the answer to your question they got a copy of the book and if you're having a problem with the book um they can turn you to the proper page now not every gm is that guy i know i'm that guy i know when i'm teaching someone a game i'm like check page 285 blah, 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 blah. yeah yeah you know not every gm is that one but if you show up early and talk to the game master of whatever game you're playing and you've got questions, they can point you in the right direction. If nothing else, they may be able to point you to a YouTube video to watch while they're prepping for the game. 
okay? But ask questions. Ask questions of the other players before the game starts. And never be afraid to talk to or to say what your intentions are with an action. Now, one of the things that comes out in a lot of games is antagonism between player and GM. There's this idea that since it's a game, a game must be won. And if it's all the players over here and this one player over there, it must be an antagonistic relationship. And that's not generally the way it goes with um, tabletop role-playing games, okay? Um, and so when I'm at the table, I get a lot of round the world, not to the point questions. You know, not the ones that start with can I, but, um, well, how far away is this? How far away is that? And I'm like, what is the question behind that question? What are you asking? What would you like to do? If you would like to do this, I will let you know if it's possible. And if it's not possible, I will explain to you why. And if it is possible, I will have you roll the dice. That is what I will have you do. So don't be afraid of asking your GM because if you're at the right table, okay, your GM will help you succeed or at least will let you know what is and isn't possible. But if you show up early or at least on time and you ask questions in good faith, you'll get answers and you'll improve. You might not see the improvement, but if you do these things, wait until the next new person comes up and you'll be surprised at how far you've come. I mean, I'm, I'm serious. I didn't realize when I became good. Now, um, what do we do about silence? When you're afraid to speak up, you're afraid to be noticed because you're afraid to be laughed at or anything like that. Speak up, give the other players at the table a chance to surprise you. You would be, I mean, I can't tell you how many times I didn't know what the rule was to this game or I just forgotten it because it had been 10, 12, 13 years since I played any of these games. And when I spoke up, people were like, oh, you don't know that? Well, here's this. Or I thought you knew that. Nope, just plain forgot, you know. Um, and whether or not I had an excuse, I mean, my excuse was I worked at a game store and it was my job to read at least three role-playing books that I hadn't read before a week. That was my job. Okay, my job was to study this stuff. But for people that didn't have to do this for a living, you know, um, even with all the studying I did of so many games, my brain ain't perfect, so I forget stuff. Happens, you know? So the thing about silence is recognize that you're feeling uncomfortable and when it's your turn, and it will be your turn when the GM looks at you and says, hey, Roger, what do you do? Speak up, ask questions, you know? Um, and you would be surprised at how many people at the table are willing to answer your question outright. If for no other reason, the faster you have a good answer to your question, the more the game can get along and the faster their turn comes. So it's a win-win and all you gotta do is speak up. That's a really big thing. Now, when it comes to arguing realism, okay? Arguing realism, again, if you're playing Dungeons and Dragons and you hear, that's not realistic, don't be a jerk. Or if you want to argue that realism, don't be cruel about it and recognize that you are playing games that are based on playing pretend in imaginary world with species of creatures that do not exist. <laughs> so at what point, it, it's like, wait, we're playing a game where you're playing an elf, that guy is playing a dwarf, that guy is playing a literal walking lizard person, and we are hunting down a dragon that can cast magic. And, and whether or not a fireball can be cast inside a cave, that's where you draw the line? Really? Not at the magic slinging dragon? Not at the dude who made a character who, um, oh, I don't know, um, 
who made a character who possessed a piece of toast and always manages to get himself placed on a on a piece of uh, on a piece of flatware in any inner tavern and possesses the body of anyone who eats it that's fine but whether or not you can cast a fireball inside that's where you draw the line i mean come on come on you know so recognize that um you're playing a game of pretend and in playing a game of pretend there are so many rules now i haven't given a shout out to mp city uh this week and make no mistake shout outs to mp city um you know his majesty paul mansfield is like yeah unless the game is paranoia then don't ask questions and that's true but that's baked into the rules and that's all part of the game <laughs> you, you see what i mean and even then you know even then if you're arguing realism and paranoia, you're playing a paranoid clone inside a dystopian future run by a computer that says it wants everyone happy, but it really wants everything docile. Again, where do you draw the line on realism? Of course, where does that game draw the line on modern politics? Anyway, <laughs> um, so yeah, you know, so as far as the whole arguing for realism, that is, um, that's a huge thing. That, that's a huge thing. It really is a, this is where you draw the line kind of question. You know, orcs are fine, goblins are fine, um, dragons are fine, magic's fine. Um, you know, fighting 50 or 60 people at a time, oh, that's perfectly fine. But, oh no, if they cast the fireball, all the air gets sucked out of the room and... <laughs> stop. Just, just stop. Let it go. Let it go. It, it, it really is. So, arguing realism... When this comes up as a defense mechanism, just take a breath and remember that every single person that is at that table at one time did not know what they were doing. In fact, that time might be now. Okay? Um, I know there's a lot of games that I have to teach people in order for me to play for the first time. So I've got to study a bunch of rules and when I'm playing, people ask questions questions about what they can do when it comes to their next turn. And I'm like, I'm not sure. Let's look it up in the book. You know, learning is part of the process and that can also be a fun part of the game. You know, now, cell phone telephones at the table. This one is a tough one. Okay, this one is a very tough one. Um, now, one of the things that I've managed to do to get past the cell phone telephone thing is... I try and have my new players download a dice app, okay? Um, because when it comes to their turn, they gotta roll some stuff, and I have people roll a lot. Um, it's a lot easier for them to keep the app on than it is for them to go to their game and play their Tetris, or in my case, a Candy Crush um, color matching knockoff. And then when it's my turn, it's like, oh, wait, let me get out of this app and turn in, you know, it becomes way inconvenient for me to be on Twitter all day. So that's my personal solution um, to that. But when it comes to wanting to be on your cell phone because you're not interested in what's happening in the game at the moment, just take a breath and think about that golden rule, you know, um, everybody that's playing the game from the dungeon master to whoever brought food is there to have fun with other people and that means with other people doesn't mean you interact only when it's your turn so again i tend to use um i, I tend to have people use dice apps because the dice apps are free um they tend to run kind of slow and it makes things a lot easier if I forget a dice tray so that they're not crawling around on the floor all G darn night trying to find the D4 that they dropped, you know? And they and you want them to find that D4. Believe me, you want them to find the D4. And finally, how do we get past the humor? Now, the humor thing, that's a big one, all right? Um, I really don't know how to do that one. Um, I really don't. When it comes to people telling a bunch of jokes, um, I'm an older man, okay? I'm an older man. I'm also six foot four. So when I look at people with what I call the dad's eyes, 
they tend to back up. And those dad's eyes are the eyes that look at you and say, I know what you're doing. Now knock it the crap off. You know, um, people tend to back up on using a lot of the humor. Okay. Um, but when it comes to doing that, what I recommend for GMs that don't have the privilege of being over six foot or knowing how to bolster their presence is power through until the break in the game and take that player aside and really ask them, you know, are you uncomfortable with the game right now? Are, are you are you not, you know, do you have any real questions? We can sit down with a book and I can point you to a few things, but what you're doing right now is distracting and it's taking away from the fun that everybody else is having. There's nothing wrong with being uncomfortable, but let's find a way to integrate you instead of you doing what you're doing, you know, and, and that's the kind of thing. Um, yeah, I mean, that that's that's a real thing. These are these are some of the things I got. What do we got here in the chat? Um, <laughs> that's funny. Having games since smartphones hit the market. Yeah, old man. Yeah, yeah. I got, I got you on that. Like, oh, I'm gonna grab my Geritol. I haven't, I haven't games since smartphones hit the market. <laughs> um, you know, yeah, that's exactly it. Chasing TV. Chasing TV is like my mom is five foot nothing, and she can give me that same look. <laughs> and a flip hop will be hitting heads. Yeah. Um. All right, I'm going to say this right now for the people who are watching this and who are eventually going to be watching this on YouTube. Don't throw chunklas at your players. <laughs> you want to keep them around. <laughs> you know, I promise you, <laughs> you're going to lose players if you throw shoes at them. You know, and don't get me wrong. Jason is talking about how his mom could throw a chancla. My mom had the boomerang um, stiletto. Literally, haha, you missed me. <laughs> Where'd that come from? And you know, they're they're shaped like that. And it was woof, 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 woof. Haha, missed me, mom. Oh, God, that wasn't cool. Yeah, so don't throw shoes at your players. Don't throw dice at your players. Um, yes, you will have you will have many, many, many of them, and it will be tempted to go. D8, 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 but no, 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 that's, again, that's not a cool thing. Um, if you're the GM, I say practice the look, um, and if you're the player that wants to try and do these things, I'm gonna say don't, because, again, the consequences of doing this is, yes, you, you do something different that might not outwardly show that you're uncomfortable but what you're doing at that point is making is taking the air out of the room and turning the situation to be all about you with people who have taken time out of their schedules to do something fun together you've made it so that the only thing that they can do together is to pay attention to you and if you're not the person that's doing this, like if if you weren't the center of attention on that thing and you were in their situation, how would you feel? You know, I mean, that's 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 not a cool thing. And again, all these things come down to if a person feels trapped in a game. OK, if nothing else, it's fine to say no, you don't have to be there, you know, because it's just a game. So if you don't want to play, even if the GM is like, no, I think you would really enjoy it. Give it a shot. Give it a shot. Give it a shot. If you say yes, be all in. If you're not all in, don't say yes. Or if you're not willing to be all in, but have the integrity of interacting and doing your best to be there when you say you will. You know, one of my personal big pet peeves is people saying yes when they mean no. God, does it waste my time. But it makes me gullible, but the only thing that, I, I may be stuck in a false dichotomy, okay? But if I'm not gullible enough to take people at their word, then that just makes me cynical and think that everyone's a liar. I'm not all here, I am neurodivergent, it's a thing. Um, but if the answer is no, I can take it. 
I won't take it as an insult to who I am as a person. No, you don't want to be in my game. No, it's cool. It's just less work for me. <laughs> okay, because if I have one fewer player, that means that's one less decision path that I have to calculate for in regards to the story arc that I've outlined on this. Um, but if you're in, be in. You know, really engage. I like to think about it about it like a conversation. If someone's talking to you and you want to talk to them, but when you want to talk to them, they just trail off, then they're not in a real conversation with you. They're not acting in good faith. You know, so act in good faith and part of good faith is admitting when you're uncomfortable, admitting when you don't know something and be willing to find out what you don't know. And that was something my mom always talked to me about. She said that my dad once looked at her and said, I will never be mad at you for not knowing, but I will give you hell and rain down upon thee from a great height if you don't try and find out, you know, now. I'm not going to rain down vengeance and furious anger on people that don't try to learn. I, I just don't have that much energy. I'm sitting here in front of you with a really bad back. I'm in pain today, but um, which is why we didn't broadcast yesterday. And I'm sorry about that. But, um, but the fact of the matter is, if you say you're going to show up and say that you're interested, be there and be interested until the end of the session. You never know. Something might happen that might grab your attention and you might get struck with fun, like a bolt of lightning. That is how these things go, okay? Um, that's happened to a lot of new players that I've gone through over the years where they're like boring, boring, boring. Oh wait, I can do that? Oh my God, I did that, it was so fun, blah, 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 blah. And they had the starring moment of the game session and that made them hungry to come back. And that's awesome because in that moment, they saw how much fun we have. They saw how these games are played. And another one got a puzzle and they were like, well, I don't know. This seems a little And then they were like, whoa, dude, this was actually fun. Um, I'm posting it tonight because I've been listening to and trying to do a little bit of editing, but I may post the raw track of the Vegas one shot that I did uh, last weekend. And you guys will see, you guys will see when you guys listen to it. Um, patrons first, they get a, they get access. So, you know, you guys want to see it, it's a dollar. Um, yeah, and seriously speaking, seriously, seriously, seriously speaking, you know, everybody in the game session that had never sat down, they all had a moment that hooked them. And when I said, I'm calling the game after an hour, I got a collective, ah, across the room. And I'm like, okay, these guys finally understand what this stuff is there for. So I'm gonna, um, you know, I want you guys to think about that and just think about a lot of the stuff that I did, but guess what? Um, we are actually out of time and that is a thing. So, um, many props out um to um to one of my dudes out there and when i say one of my dudes out there um i'm talking well his name is taz love this guy love this guy god i had him pulled up and everything he is the man ah yeah taz tim jetter look for taz look for mr jetter he is the reason that we got some of these cool new beats that we got going because yeah we're doing more music and better music and all that stuff because you know um the patrons were able to come through and i was able to buy a little bit more music and check out this guy taz tim jetter he does some free stuff he does some pay stuff he's a musician at large and he's kind of um, he's kind of the, well, I don't want to say he's like Kevin McLeod at incompetent, but black, but, um, he gives us a little flavor and something a little bit, a little bit more hip, a little bit more urban, a little bit. I don't know what they're saying. It's just like, let, let's say his stuff slaps a little bit more. Um, and of course, major thanks to, um, our royalty or our highest ranking Patreon deckers. That is Queen Shannon Lay, um, his majesty, Paul David Mansfield, and of course our ace in the hole, Jennifer L. Crow. But, um, if you guys want to join us and all that stuff, well, I'm sorry, it's too late. We just ran out of time. We even went over a little bit cause I ain't paying much attention to that, but 
feel free to send us a question or comment over at backonthedeck at gmail.com. That's B-A-C-K-I-N-T-H-E-D-E-C-K at gmail.com. Um, hit us up on the social medias, Instagram and Twitter at um, Instagram.com slash back in the deck or Twitter.com slash back in the deck. Um, find us on that wretched hive of scum and ability known as Facebook. You can just find us on Deckers on the Book, and it's a cool group. Um, I am the head moderator on that one, and that is a big piece of fun there. Um, and that's where you guys can post us your builds and tell your stories and all that stuff. Um, and of course, if you guys don't like the whole talking head things and all that jazz, that's easy. Just head over to soundcloud.com slash BID underscore P and listen to our audio. All right. So, yeah, it's me talking, but you don't have to look at my head and all that other stuff because a lot of people don't like talking head tracks and I get that. Um, so you guys can listen to our stuff. You can download it for free okay this is this is one of the things our patreon money goes for i pay for the account for you guys to listen to our audio wherever you want whenever you want by downloading it for free that means you can download hours of our content put it in the car listen to it on your drive to work or whenever you feel like listening to podcasts and stuff like that like while you're washing dishes and all that stuff that way you don't have to deal with a whole lot of you know, does my internet work here? Is my phone plan good? Can you keep, you know, turning off and all that stuff? No, you can download it. You can listen to it. It'll play fine. Look at all that. Isn't that cool? And of course, if you guys want to help us out directly, just head over to patreon.com slash BID underscore P and become a Decker, you know, for as little as a dollar a month. Are we cooler than a couple of Hostess cupcakes? I think we are. And um, you guys can get access to all the stuff that we put up, access to the video archives, advanced screenings on the stuff before I put it up um, for the public to watch and all that jazz. Um, just like our royalty tier, um, you know, Her Majesty Queen Shannon Lay, um, His Majesty King Paul D. Mansfield, and of course our ace in the hole, Jennifer Crow. So that is where we are cutting it off for the day thank you guys for showing up major shout outs to NP city thank you guys for holding it down and here's all of our stuff yeah do a screen capture so you know where to get a hold of us and um thank you guys for joining me on the dark side of the room and remember if anybody tells you that you can't like what you like or do what you want to learn because of the circumstances of your birth be it race religion creed gender identity sexual orientation your disabilities or your financial standing you just tell them that we said to take them cards and put them back in the deck this is solar gray the cinematic sorcerer saying we will see you tomorrow if you guys are so inclined on Game Gallery, but if not, then we will see you next time on the dark side of the room. <laughs>